All right, so I got a new pair of sneakers out here and I wanted to show you guys what uh, these things were all about because this looks very, very familiar to some of the things that we've seen in the past. We've seen Everrun from Saucony, but now they have this new Power Run Plus and a really ridiculous, huge looking midsole with this boost-like material. And I wanted to give it kind of my thoughts and share the video with you guys. So let's go ahead and get into it. What is going on guys, Hess here, collectivekicks.com. If you guys would like to shop this week's top sneaker deals, check the link in the description and happy shopping. If you do wanna buy a pair of these as well, I will link them in the description also. Yes, I know from a sneaker perspective, these things are bulky and weird looking. Not aesthetically something I really like. I think it looks really clunky. This might be one of the ugliest, most comfortable shoes on the market, and it is the Triumph 17. Here's a Saucony box for those that are not familiar. It does say Triumph 17, and uh, I have a 9.5, my true to size. And something I really like about this box is on the bottom, uh, for those runners out there, because this is primarily a running shoe, they do have like a pace chart on here and the personal record chart that you can fill in and circle and stuff like that. I think that's kind of a cool little thing. I'll never use it obviously, because this is a casual perspective and I'm not gonna use these for running. And honestly, if I was going to be running, I have so many different pairs of running shoes as of right now. Would this be a shoe that I would run in or not? I'm not 100% sure. Now at first glance, you look at this and you're like, whoa, wait a minute. like. This looks like a little bit of black boost right here. And then they have more boost here with a weird little spiky things. And looks like boost and react kind of combined in a sense with that weird little midsole design, but it's kind of interesting. And then you can see on the bottom Saucony right there. So they do use some uh, TPU type pellets and it's the same sort of thing as Everrun, which is the same sort of thing as Adidas Boost. And I've done a video of these years ago when Everrun first came out. Now this is like the updated version of the Power Run Plus. And I didn't even know that this came out until I did my technology for 2020 video. So I will be featuring these in the follow-up video. I apologize for the misinformation. I didn't realize that this was actually something different because for somebody that hasn't paid attention to the technologies from these uh, running brands like this, from first glance, it looks exactly the same thing as Everrun. And in fact, like on feed, it to me personally, it doesn't feel too much different than Everrun. Everrun was pretty decent for myself at least. It's soft and stuff and it's snappy, but I wouldn't say it's any softer than the Everrun. The Everrun from what I remember was actually pretty good. But that's just my thoughts. If you guys have your own thoughts, of course, leave a comment in the comment section. So I did actually see a video from Jamie's reviews on these. Shout out to that dude for uh, doing lots and lots of cool running videos. I've mentioned him in the past. Definitely a nice uh, channel for those people that actually want to know about the performance of the shoes. I'm more of a casual perspective, obviously, but he had a lot of high praise for the shoe from a max cushion uh, sneaker perspective. So of course I was interested, but, um, but shout out to you guys out there that actually mentioned these sneakers to me in some of my previous videos. I did a New Balance Fresh Foam video pretty recently, as well as these weird A6 joints right here that I was not a fan of. And also these Hoka Stinson ATRs. And basically I've been just trying these running sneaker technologies to see if there's a crossover between lifestyle and performance. Obviously I'm on the lifestyle side. So once you guys were tagging me on this sneaker specifically, and then I saw Jamie's video, uh, I had to give it a try. And I have to say, I tried these on already immediately as soon as I pulled them out of box. And there's definitely some things I really like about the shoe. There's a couple of things I'm not really that big of a fan of. These do retail for $150, and as I mentioned, they are true to size. I got a wide version too. They actually have regular and wide, so I think that that's actually something that's really rad, the fact that they offer wide sizes. Uh, and um, again, I'll link them in the description. So I wanted to give you just some information about these sneakers before we get into it and the product details. It says that these are for those that crave the ultimate protection cushioning. The Triumph 17 is their most cushioned shoe giving you everything you need to cruise, making it through the longest runs. It features Power Run Plus, which gives you a springy and responsive underfoot feel that keeps you strong and feeling fresh. The form fit acts like a luxurious bucket seat for your foot, conforming to your perfect fit and providing comfort in every angle. The cushioning is actually 27% lighter than the previous. They actually are promoting this as a lightweight comfort cushion shoe. The weight is about a 10.7 ounce for my size. So they're definitely proud of this new Power Run Plus. I'd actually say it's pretty good on feet. The upper is interesting. You have some reinforcement in the toe box section here, but then you have an engineered mesh and then you have some hits of uh, fuse material uh, through the Saucony logo and then through the back here has an interesting little soft feel to it. Kind of a neoprene sort of material, but this is where it gets weird. You have this really big, huge oversized um, neoprene cup that kind of hooks your foot in the back. It's actually pretty nice and comfortable to be honest, but it just looks really weird. You have a really crazy plush tongue. I mean, this thing is thick. The thickest tongue I've seen 
on, on one of these running shoes, honestly. And then it doesn't end down there. It actually makes its way all the way up to the top. It honestly feels like a 90s basketball shoe sort of cushioning. Like it's very bizarre to see on like a new style of running shoe, especially when everything is more minimalist sort of upper. And this one took things to the exact opposite and made it look real crazy with that maximum cushioning. Even these laces are a little bit weird. They're kind of fuzzy and almost stretchy, which is just different. I've never really seen laces like these on any of the shoes that I have and I have quite a few pairs. One of the key features that I like about the shoe though is the, uh, the traction. The traction is super, super nice really sticky. Even downstairs in my kitchen, I was like, wow, these things really stick well, better than any of the shoes that I've tried in recent times. Whatever material they use for this traction is really nice and it is well felt. Something kind of interesting that I found here when I take out the insole is you have this form fit uh, insole, just kind of a nice looking insole. But then when you look in here, it has this beaded material. It's actually soft and squishy. And this I thought was power foam or the power run or whatever. It's almost gimmicky looking like this little material right here gives you a nice little soft uh, squish to it. And then the bottom down here is like that little strobo board or whatever down here that is a little bit um, firm. Like it's really quite firm underneath here. So I don't know really what to make of that, but it seems kind of interesting. So I'm pretty sure what you guys really came here for though is the midsole and my thoughts on the midsole and how it stacks up to some of the competition out there. Um, it's actually kind of hard to say because this is uh, one of those midsoles. It's not super squishy and soft like I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be really, really soft, softer than Boost, softer than React sort of thing. In my opinion, it's kind of in between. When I compare Nike React to Adidas Boost, I feel like React is definitely the softer of the two materials, at least after long-term wear and multiple models that I've tried. I feel like this is softer than um, Adidas Boost, but it's not as soft as Nike React. It looks like it's a crazy well-cushioned shoe, and it is, but it doesn't have that cloud-like feel like I was kind of expecting or hoping it would be. So I'm gonna cut to my garage real quick and show you guys some comparison to some of the other models I pulled out. So I'm out in the garage actually trying on some of the other shoes that I have out here. This is a mess, I need to clean it up. But as you can see here, I got five other pairs that I'm comparing next to the Saucony I try them 17s and they actually feel like a combination of a bunch of different shoes. So, so this is a 9117, which is a Adidas model. It's super comfortable, huge, ridiculous boost outsole. And the squishiness is actually pretty similar to that. This one is a little bit softer than this one, but uh, but it still is really, really close. After trying on all five of these, I mean, the ones that come closest to the midsole feel is honestly these, the React Prestos. It's super squishy, um, not quite as squishy as this one. This one's a little bit more squishy than this. This has a little bit more snap to it, but it still is really, really soft. In fact, it's more so than you can feel than on the Ultra Boost and also on the Ultra Boost ST. This is the Pegasus Turbo, one of my favorites, and the Pegasus Turbo definitely feels softer on feet than this one. This is a lot firmer comparison. But I just wanna give you guys an update as I was trying some of these on. Let's go back in the room. So those are just some of the models I had in my garage. I will have a full comparison between these, the New Balance 1080s, uh, the new Asics joints, the Hoka's, and then the Infinity Reacts and Ultra Boost 20s, and just give you guys my two cents on which ones I feel are the most comfortable out of all of the newer technologies that I've tried. So is it worth $150 or not though, from a casual perspective? I think it's a shoe that you can wear casually. I feel like a grandpa or somebody would be wearing these uh, probably more so than myself. Like they're just not stylish at all. And to me, that's like big thing. If I'm wearing something casually, I'd like it for it to be stylish and comfortable. And this hits one of the two notes. It's comfortable, but it's not stylish, at least for my eyes. Colorways aren't very good on it either. I don't really like the colorways that they offer. This isn't the only buy for $150 though. Honestly, I'm gonna keep throwing this shoe out there as much as I can now because this Fresh Foam X uh, 1080 V10 is like the best thing that I've tried on in a long time from another company other than Nike and Adidas. Like I would definitely rather have this shoe for $150 over this one. Stylistically, it's a little bit better. On feet, it feels better. It's a little bit lighter feeling and definitely the cushioning is more cloud-like and softer and squishier. Probably too soft and squishy for actual runners, but for lifestyle, like if you want that soft, squishy feel, this is the one. These ones are decent, but it's definitely snappier and, and firmer than what the uh, the 1080s are. So I'm just throwing that out there. Like these are good, but not as good as those ones for $150. Overall comfort is actually pretty good. It's just not a shoe that I see myself wearing a ton just because of the looks. If it had better looks though, I'd probably throw this into rotation more often. Because of what Adidas did, it definitely paved a pathway for what this shoe is now. And I feel like this shoe comfort wise can compete with like the Ultra Boost 20s. There's that much cushion in the shoe. It's not as squishy though as like Zoom X or the Fresh Foam X from New Balance, but it is squishy and nice on feet. 
Um, so it's nice alternative to Adidas Boost, I would say. Uh, stylistically though, it's not something I can really rock with. These things are just, these shoes are like for trendy grandpas in my opinion. They're just not for me. Um, I, I don't think I can make these look good, but that is just my two cents. Maybe in a better colorway maybe, but it's a good experience on feet though. If you guys are interested in trying a pair, check the link in the description. And I'm curious to see where they take this power run technology. It feels like uh, Saucony's all in with it and all of their inline models. And hopefully we can work on the styling of the uppers and stuff and make it look a little bit better. But that's the video, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Again, if you guys are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, notification bell to be notified of when the videos go live. I expect to follow up though with some of the other technologies that we talked about and compare them to these. Have a good day, hopefully we'll see you guys for some more videos very soon, peace guys.